everyone, Emma here, also known as Eat Fun Hello, bringing you all another video. Today's video is going to be a mix of my vinyl update videos, my monthly haul videos, as well as my music chat videos. So in terms of haul, I have three new records that I acquired in June that I want to showcase and share with you guys. A couple of those records actually are going to lead into a quick little music chat. And if you're familiar with music chat videos that I put out in the past, basically, uh, I'll put them out. If I don't necessarily have vinyl related um, content to film, but I have really, really cool music stories that I want to share with you guys on this channel because we're music lovers, first and foremost. So this is going to be kind of a mixture of both. Um, and it actually ends up working out because two records that I picked up out of the three um, then also have to do with the information and story story time, I guess, uh, that I want to share with you guys. So we're going to kick off. We're going to kick off with the first record that doesn't have a story attached to it, um, but I'm very, very excited to have added this in the collection. I'm keeping up with my mold discography and getting that collection rolling. Finally, ended up pulling the trigger on Bob Mold, Beauty and Ruin. This was a release from 2014 and is an extremely well put together and well done uh, Bob Mold release. His solo, his discography in general is rather massive, especially if you consider Husker Du and then Sugar, and then you get into Bob Mold's solo material. It can be kind of a interesting endeavor to undertake, but I have undertook um, that specific kind of journey into Mold world. And this is an album that I've wanted for a while because my first major introduction to mold outside of Copper Blue, Sugar, and the Beaster EP, and um, a few Husker Du, you know, a few Husker Du songs that I was familiar with, was going to actually see him perform on his solo electric tour in October. And I've shared that story a handful of times here on this channel. Um, but when I saw him live and just saw the energy that he brought and the fun that he brought and the passion that he brought to performing just himself with a guitar and a microphone. Um, I was just blown away and of course I met him after and this and that but um, so ever since then I have just been hooked on mold and also really wanted to pick up this particular album because one of the songs that he sang on that um, solo electric tour that kind of blew me away was I Don't Know You Anymore. Amazing song off of this album. This is a really hard sounding Bob Mould solo release. Very heavy, very, very good. Um, so if you aren't familiar with this, I recommend checking it out. Uh, but you probably are familiar with the song I Don't Know You Anymore. And if not, give it a listen and let me know what you think. But Great mold release, needed to pick this up for the collection, and I absolutely love this cover where you can kind of see mold now and mold then in that classic Husker Du picture when he's smoking the cigarette. So, great addition to the collection and a fantastic release by the man himself. Beauty and Ruin, Bob Mold, 2014. All right, the next album that I'm going to showcase also has a, a story along with it, part of this music chat uh, section of this video. But one of the newer releases that I picked up in June was, well, this isn't necessarily new, although it is the newer album from this band. This is Sun Vault Electro Melodier. Now, Sun Vault is a band that I had really only heard of through John at the Digital Gramophone. He's a huge Uncle Tupelo, Wilco, Sun Vault, Jay, so on, you know, Jeff Tweedy, etc. Um, fan. That's like his expertise. Um, he actually has a great video out. I'm gonna link it down below if you're interested and you do enjoy those bands. Go check out his video where he kind of reviews and recaps them and, and talks about their material. But I never really outside of sampling them here and there, gave them a chance. Listened to this album, ended up streaming it a lot. Realized that they were playing um, at a venue that was close to me that I could drive to in Illinois and bought tickets and decided that I was gonna go to the show. 
So I got this album, played the absolute crap out of this thing prior to the show. I got this a couple days before, played it, which is, this is an amazing album. This is from 2021. Uh, Reveries on here, which they do a great live version of Arky Blue. Uh, Diamonds and Cider Cigarettes. My personal favorite from this album is Lucky Ones. Um, really beautiful song, but just a great album in general. So anyway, long story short, go to the concert. It was at a smaller venue called The Stable, I believe. Um, and just like with Bob Mole, John has this weird thing with getting me to go to shows that I'm not sure I'm gonna like, and then I'm turn into like a fan for life after. Um, so I decided to give him a chance because John's a great friend and I trust his music taste. And like I said, I sampled a bunch of Sun Vault before the show and I really, really enjoyed what I heard. And so I went to the show and I was just, again, blown away by what I heard. I had so much fun. It was probably a room of maybe 200 people um, max. And every single person was just dancing and having an absolute blast. And so was I. I didn't really know the words to any of these songs besides, or any of the Sun Vault songs besides um, the few that they played off of this release. And then um, that Uncle Tupelo song at the end, which I've heard a couple times as well prior to going. Uh, but it, and they actually actually did a cover of Seeker by The Who. Anyway, <laughs> as you can tell, I'm kind of excited because it was just amazing. Uh, it blew me away. But the coolest part of the night and part of this kind of music chat that I wanted to share was right at the end of the show, Andrew, who's their bassist, handed me a set list. Not only did Andrew hand me a set list, but as they were walking off, I was kind of at the side and I'll put in video clips for you to kind of see here. But as they were walking off, now Jay doesn't have custom picks, but he plays these picks. And he basically played this particular pick, I think most of the night, if not the entire night. And as he was walking off, he put this in my hand. And you can see it's kind of played there at the bottom. So you guys know how I feel about collecting guitar picks. This is an awesome addition to the collection. I know that, like I said, it's not custom, um, but I know where it came from and that was a, a pretty cool moment to experience. So, but that does, that's not where the story ends. So after the show, uh, we're kind of waiting and waiting for the place to clear out a little bit before getting in the car and going home. And Andrew walks out, the bassist that I was talking about, gave me the set list and we ended up talking with him for maybe about three or four minutes just kind of talking about the show and talking about bass and things like that and I had made a comment you know I was drinking a little bit I made I made a comment about how cool it was I was like if I had a sharpie I'd have you sign this well not only did he sign this but he ended up bringing this he, he took this and said he'd be right back he brought this back and got it signed from everybody in the band so you can kind of see their signatures scattered around um so I'm a huge music memorabilia person, as you can tell from my love of collecting guitar picks and set lists. I have, I have a whole bunch of that stuff. So this is a really cool addition to the collection, and definitely end up I'm gonna get this framed and and kind of put together a little thing. But uh, I wanted to share that story with you guys because I thought that that was very cool. All right, the last thing that I wanted to showcase, the last pickup from June, which also has a small little story attached with it. <laughs> You're probably thinking how many copies of this album, one, do you have, and two, do you need? Um, how many copies do I have with this included? I'm probably at about four or five Budokans, and then I have the Complete Concert and so on um, that Music on Vinyl put out, which relates to this, which I'll explain in a second. And then in terms of how many do I need? Every variant that's out there that I can find. I'm just gonna keep going. Cheap Trick is the band that I will search for every variant, every little weird little thing, every country, every, I mean, anything. I will pick it up. That's, this is my band, right? <laughs> so um, why did I pick this up? What makes this different? So this is very neat. First off, when I saw this, I, I found this on eBay. Um, when I saw this, I didn't even know that this pressing existed. 
And so, of course, right away, without even thinking, I pressed the buy now button. I mean, I, I couldn't have pressed that faster because I didn't know it existed and the price was fairly decent. No arguments there. Um, but as you can see, it's on this yellow vinyl. Now, what's really neat and one thing that I still do need is that this yellow at Budokan kind of color scheme, wax, isn't new. Um, when this was first released in the UK, they did a limited run of what was then called Kamikaze Yellow um, Vinyl. So the yellow at Budokan connection is there. I still need to get one of those original UKs. Um, but this particular pressing, this is a 2010 limited edition music on vinyl release on this yellow limited edition vinyl. Yellow vinyl copies, they only made 500 of them. I also think that Friday, or not Friday music, music on vinyl put out a standard black where there's probably more copies available, but the yellow variant that they put out, um, only, only 500 copies exist. So I have one of them. And like I said before, I saw it on eBay, which was surprising even for me, I didn't know they existed. <laughs> so this is one of the cooler cheap trick pickups that I have picked up in a very, very long time. So I'm, I'm so excited to have this in the collection and I played it, I sampled it, it sounds amazing. Music on vinyl, you cannot go wrong. Which gets me to the last part of this video, music chat part. As you can see, I'm wearing a new cheap trick shirt. This is a 2022 tour shirt. And if you collect Cheap Trick merchandise, I know that a lot of Cheap Trick fans watch me. Um, this is the shirt that they're using. And yes, finally this year, because they haven't done it the past couple years, um, they put the tour dates on back. So that's a good thing. Um, but I did go see Cheap Trick for the first time in about a year. I saw them play on the 4th of July in O'Fallon, Missouri. They had a free show there, outdoor show. It was one of the hottest shows. Um, and I've seen a lot of Cheap Trick outdoor summer shows, but it was one of the hottest shows, if not the hottest Cheap Trick show I've ever been to, but it was worth um, all of the waiting and all of the dancing and all of the excitement and sweat and whatever else. It was totally worth it. Um, it was the second year in a row that I've seen my favorite band on the 4th of July. Previous year, I saw them in Love's Park slash Rockford and kind of like a hometown show. Um, but like I said, this was in O'Fallon, Missouri. And it was the first time that I've seen them in about a year. Um, I've seen Rick Nielsen with the Nielsen Trust a handful of times, which I've shown clips in here on this channel, but Cheap Trick in general, first time in a year. And the first time that I have seen Tom Peterson with the band since I think 2019. Um, Tom Peterson, I won't get into the whole story on here, but he had an open heart surgery and was gone for a bit and then COVID happened. And so in, it took him a while to return, but he finally returned at the beginning of this year and he looks amazing. I'm so glad that he's feeling better and he's doing okay. And I'm so glad to see him back uh, with, with the Cheap Trick boys. It just feels like everything's complete. So it, it was great seeing all of those guys back together again and jamming out to those songs. You could tell that the heat was getting to them a little bit, but in Cheap Trick fashion, they kept going and they put on an absolutely phenomenal, phenomenal show. Um, so I have nothing but good things to say about that show as I usually do when reviewing a Cheap Trick show. Uh, they played uh, a lot from Budokan. They played, um, you know, Big Eyes, Come On, Come On, um, Ain't That a Shame. They played Light Up the Fire from In Another World, their newer release. Um, and then of course played the hits with I Want You to Want Me, Dream Please, Surrender, um, and so on. There weren't any major deep cuts at this show, but I think that because it was a free show and they kind of went through the set, you know, in like a quick hour and a half and it was hot and so on, you don't really expect to hear super deep cuts during those shows. Um, but it was still a fun show nonetheless. And like I said, they sounded amazing. Tom looked great. Robin's voice was spot on. Rick was fun. Dax was fun. Robin Taylor Xander was fun. And it was a blast. And I finally got my 2022 short tour shirt. <laughs> so uh, I do get to see them again at least one more time this summer. I have tickets to see them here in Illinois in a couple weeks. But um, with that, everybody, that is all for this video. I hope that all of you are doing well, and I will see you guys for my next video. Bye, guys.